Good day, gentlemen. Welcome to the first lecture of Board 718, which is Computer in Organization. Uh, without waste of time, I'd like to start by introducing myself. I'm Engineer K. Abubilal, PhD, from the Electrical, of Engin uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering of Ahmad Bella University, Zaria. And I would like to advise you that if you should always ask questions whenever you learn something from the person that teach you if you don't understand. Though this one is a virtual tutorial, but you can have a means of communicating with me or any other person that can help you. And I also advise you to target two things simultaneously. That is try to get the knowledge from the course and at the same time try to get a good result because most of the students pay their attention to the area of getting the results regardless to whether they understand or not which is very bad uh, this course uh, has a content with 14 items which i call 14 point agenda as you can see it starts from definitions of computer and other things that have to do with that and it moves to the second item which is the history of the computer and how it's developed and up to the level of application of Microsoft Word, Excel, and the PowerPoint. So let us go straight to the first item of our content, which is definition. And we start by asking ourselves, what is a computer? And the computer is defined as a programmable, as a programmable electronic device. It is programmable. By programmable, we mean it can be given a set of instructions on how it can operate. And this programmable electronic device has ability of accepting data as an input. And then it has the ability of processing that input data. And eventually it has the ability of producing results from that processing. And that result is called an information. So if you look at the computer, we have like four keywords. We said it is an electronic device, but not all electronic device, the one that is programmable. And we said it has the ability of accepting data as an input, and it processes the input data and finally produces a result. So these are the main things that you should search on any machine. If it has this ability, it is electronic machine, it is programmable, and it can accept data, it can process the data, and produce the result then that machine satisfies all the condition of being called a computer and the complex computers we have they have another ability of storing the data yes it means the simple ones cannot have that ability of storing the data when they process it and they just produce results but the complex ones they do store data in what we call a memory and we said it is programmable then those instructions given to the computer they are called programs and these programs are built into the microprocessor of the computer this microprocessor they are chips integrated circuits that are acting as the brain of the computer now let us start defining the things we have made in the definition of computer we made mention of the ability of processing data what is processing Processing is nothing but performing mathematical and logical operations. That is, performing operations that has to do with mathematical operations like addition, subtractions, divisions, multiplications, and others like integration, depreciation, and logical operations. These logical operations have to do with comparison of two or more than two things to take decision whether the condition is satisfied or not. And this performing of mathematical and logical operation is done at a very high speed. Yes, at a very high speed. We are going to talk about the speed of the computer later. And all this thing is done based on the program which is built into the computer. Now, what is a computer program? Because among the definitions we have seen, I mean, I mean the keyword we have seen in the definition, we said it is programmable. Then what is a program? A program is a set of ordered instructions. 
a set of audit instructions that are instructions that are written in an orderly manner to instruct to guide the computer on how it should carry out its operations and therefore when we are asked what is a programming we can simply say a programming is an act of writing set of ordered instructions that guide the operations of the computer okay now these uh, uh, instructions the uh, I mean executors depending on the architecture of the computer the modern computers we are using they are based on the design of von Neumann architecture in 1945 and in this kind of architecture it executes its uh, instructions one at a time only one instruction at a time but for your information we have already mentioned that the computer operates at a very high speed which means it can carry out let's say 1000 instructions in a second 1 million instructions in a second or billion or even trillions because you can have a computer that write i mean move at gigahertz that is like in billions order and the program that guides the operation of the computer is stored in the storage area of the computer which is basically the memory we have made mention that the complex computers do have a storage area which is a memory now we have seen what is a program now we have two types of programs depending on how they are activated and how continuously they operate the first type is called interactive program and the second one is called the batch program and as I told you the differences between the two is based on what make them to operate and how continuously do they operate and let's start with the first one which is interactive program an interactive program the word is derived from interaction interaction means associating with another entity now the interactive program is a program that receives data from interactive user by interactive user we mean the person that is operating the computer or sometimes it can receive its data from another program now that program is simulating is acting like the interactive user so any program in the computer that receives its data from interactive user or from another program that represents interactive user is called interactive program example a typical example of uh, interactive program is the command interpreter that is when you write a command to the computer the software the program that will accept that your command as input and interpret it then instruct other programs to execute they are examples of interactive program and also the web browser if you look at web browser whenever you want to search for something in the computer you type it then that interactive program which is your web browser will receive your instruction then go and ask other programs to search for the information you are looking for this is interactive program then the second one is called the batch program this batch program is a program that runs whenever it receives instruction from interactive program and then it stops until another instruction comes from the interactive program a typical example of uh, a batch program is a program of computer that can compute and print the payroll of a company yes you have to ask a particular program to instruct that your computer to make those calculations and then produce the result therefore it depends on the command from interactive program so that it is called a batch program this is the second type of the program now as we said the computer runs based on the program written in it so we use different uh, languages different formats of writing those programs to the computer and we call those formats as programming languages basic examples here include the language that is called basic this basic is an abbreviation is an acronym of beginners all-purpose symbolic instruction code and another example is called assembly language 
we have a language that is called C language, we have C++ programming language, we have Java, and of course many more. These are just a few examples. Now, the language you use, the actual language you use for typing the program, so those language, I mean those things you have typed directly, they are called source program to the computer. This source program is only you, the programmer, that can understand it. The computer don't understand this. How do you make it understand it? You do what we call a compilation. You have to compile your source program for the computer to understand it and to know how to work on it. And we use this compilation using softwares that, I, that are called language compilers. We have different types of compilers for different programming languages. The result produced after the compilation is now a program that the computer can understand and it is called object program or you can simply call it a program. This program can be understood by the computer. So uh, gentlemen, ladies, this is brief definition on what a computer is and other aspects that have to do with computer. Our next aspect of uh, this course, which is item number two in our 14 point agenda, is the history and development of the computer. Uh, in reality, the development of computers started many centuries ago. Many centuries ago, different people made different I mean, attempts to produce what can be called a computer. But our discussion will be within the early 19th century to our present time. And we start by what happened in 1822. A scientist called Charles Babbage, he conceived an idea to develop a steam-driven calculating machine. Steam-driven. A steam-driven is just like a mechanical engine. But it is not like it is it was not like to be used for a uh, combined people like a vehicle no it is supposed to be used for calculating and that machine has the ability of computing tables of numbers and produce results yes because it has a driven mechanism it is termed a mechanical computer then in the year 19, I mean 1890, another scientist, Herman Hellerich, he designed a punch card system. This punch card system is also a kind of computer that he used by then for calculating the census of the United States, which took place in 1880. It is this the same Herman that later established a company that became IBM. This IBM is an acronym of International Business Machine and the company started in 1911, that is early 20th century. In the year 1937, another scientist, Annette Sobs, attempted to build a computer that is not mechanical in nature because he wanted to build it without using gears, combs, belt and shafts which are common features of a mechanical machine. Then, in the year 1941, the same Annette Salt and his student Clifford, they were able to design a computer that can solve up to 29 simultaneous equations. Today, if you are given two simultaneous equations to solve concurrently, it is a bit hard work, but their machine in that time was able to solve up to 29 equations simultaneously. And this was the first computer that was developed with a main memory. Therefore, we can say the work of this Annette Soft and his student Clifford in 1941 is the beginning of a complex computer. Then, between 1943 to 1944, two professors, John and Presper, built what they call Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator, ENIAC in brief. And this is an electronic in nature, but very obsolete, very archaic, because by then it was very large 
to the extent that it can occupy a space of 20 foot by 40 foot of a room. And the vacuum, I mean the vacuum tubes, electronic components that were used for building it, it uses up to 18,000 of them, which means it was very big. But nevertheless, it was an electronic computer in nature. In 1946, uh, Motley and Presper, they built what they call Univac, which is Universal Automatic Computer. It was the first commercial computer that was sold to the public, but all the other ones before it were used at research institutions and government establishments. In the year 1953, Grace Hopper develops the first programming language, which is known as COBOL. This COBOL also is an acronym, Common uh, Business Oriented Language. CO common business oriented language. In the year 1954, the Portran programming language, which is an abbreviation of formula translation, was developed. And also in the year 1964, a person called Douglas came up with a prototype of modern computer. And this modern computer is the one that started using mouse for navigating. And it's also used graphical user interface, the display that you can use your mouse to click here to do action, click here to do another action. And in the air, this is typical example of what we call a graphical user interface. And in the year 1971, Alan Shogat leads a team of IBM engineers, that is International Business Machine a Company, to develop external storage device which is a ploppy disk look at the ploppy disk here they develop it in that year and it was the first external memory device that can be used for sharing data among the computer users in the year 1973 robots developed an ethernet this ethernet is nothing but a protocol for networking that is connecting more than one computer to operate in such a way that they can be sharing data and other informations so this year 1973 get back to the beginning of computer networking in the year 1976 two scientists steve and wozniak they develop first computer with single bot. The single bot is called motherboard, as you can see it here. It is called a motherboard. This is the simple, I mean, the first computer that uses a single bot that manage its operation. In the year 1978, VisiCalc was developed, which was the first spreadsheet that is Excel package that was developed. And in the year 1979, the word processing was given back to. We have a software called In the year 1979, the word processing came into existence when uh, a company called MicroPro International releases the first word package which they called word step and also in the year 1981 the first ibm pc that is personal computer was developed and they call it acon it uses microsoft ms dos that is dix operating system and continuing on this line of history in the year 1984 uh, another scientist called uh, Gavilan was the first person that conceived the idea and led the development of laptop, this present the mobile computer we are using. And in the year 1985, the Microsoft announces the release of their operating system they call Windows. Also, as you can see, this is actual uh, GUI of the Windows operating system and in the year 1985 that is the same year the first dot com name was registered and we can see that was the beginning of the public internet communication as we are having today 
in the year 1990, a scientist called Barnes Lee developed HTML. This HTML is an acronym of Hypertext Markup Language. It is a language that is used for developing internet web pages or websites. And we can see the developments or the introduction of HTML gave rise to the worldwide wave, which we know as WWW. In the year 1983, the uh, Pentium processor was produced or was released. And that processor has so many advantages like advanced graphics, uh, advanced music on personal computers and other features that make it very advanced. And in the year 1999, the Wi-Fi, that is wireless fidelity, came into being. And this gave birth to the wireless internet, internet without wires. In the year 2003, the first 64-bit processor was developed by AMD company and they call it Aslon 64. Before, the processors that were used have maximum uh, 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 space of 32 bits. But this one gets back to the 64 bits. And of course, up to today, the 64 is among the most advanced uh, 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 processors we have. And in the year 2007, the iPhone was released. And this iPhone is just like a smartphone, but it has all the functionalities of a computer. Therefore, iPhone gave birth to the many functions that can be carried just like uh, our smartphones are doing today. They have operating system and all of what of you. And in the year 2009, the Microsoft company releases their Windows 7. So ladies and just gentlemen, as I told you, our history uh, starts from the early 19th century to our recent time. Yes, 2009 is not the most recent time, but we decided to maintain our position here because all those things that came after it, they are like improvement on what already exists in that uh, era. So we now move to our item number three on our course contents. And this is talking about why do we need a computer and how does the computer operate? So let us start by answering the first question. That is the reason why we need a computer. We need computer because computer is inevitable. It plays significant roles in all aspects of our lives. And for this, we are going to see the applications of computer in different areas of our life today. Let's start with business. Yes, business. We are in business administration departments. So therefore, let's start with your idea. The computer is used in business for many applications as far as business is concerned. Uh, for instance, we use computer for payroll calculations. That is, if you have a company, you have employees, the computer can be used to compute all the entitlement of your stuff in an easy way. We also use it for budgeting. We also use computer for sales analysis. You are expert in this area. Therefore, I cannot explain what all these things are. You're supposed to know them. We also use computer for financial forecasting that is based on our current situation financially, we can forecast and say, okay, in two, three, ten years, possibly these are the things that can happen with respect to financial conditions of a business. We also use computer for managing employees database. We also use it for maintenance of our stock. Now, if we move to the area of banking, the computer is used in banking, almost banking operation today is totally dependent on computers because we use computers to provide online account facilities. Like you can check your current balance, you can deposit money, you can apply for overdraft, you can 
uh, check for your uh, the interest charged by a particular uh, bank you can check the status of your share with a bank and other things and also we use ATMs and these ATMs automated teller machines they are also computers we use them for transactions without necessarily going into the bank hall and deal with cashiers we also use computer for online banking to buy things pay your taxes and other things and in the area of insurance the computer is used in almost all the stages like you can use computer to establish or to know the procedure for continuing with your current policy you can also use computer for starting policy of an insurance you can use it to check the next due installment day of your policy you can also find out your maturity date your interest due your survival benefits you can also check your bonus and what have you regarding to your uh, insurance policy in the area of education the computer play a lot of i mean uh, significant roles for instance we use computer in what we call cve this cve is an abbreviation of computer based education and this computer based education is a system of education which involves the control of the activities in educational process the delivery of the knowledge to the students and evaluation of the learning uh, status of the students and many other things we also use computer for cvt which is computer based test yes everybody knows that we can write exams today on computer and get our result either instantly or uh, later we also use computer for virtual experiments yes scientists today they don't need to actually go to a physical laboratory to conduct a research they can use softwares that is virtual experiments on their computers to do simulations to see how their design is performing before they go to the physical construction and also computer is used for virtual library yes everybody knows you can get different materials different books different journals and what have you from computer today without necessarily taking a physical uh, printed document and also we use computer regarding education for preparing a database about the performance of the students and the analysis of the entire process of education delivery in the area of marketing we use computer in different places like we use it for advertising advertisements to create art graphics to write and revise copy to print and disseminate advertisements yes we also use computer for online shopping you can buy so many things from your home and the person you buy from can deliver it to your door you can make the payment online and some they accept your payment on delivery we also use computer for checking the catalogs of different stores to know what they have in stock and what they don't have and to plan how we uh, acquire those things in the area of healthcare the computer also plays significant role first of all we use computer today for diagnostic systems yes we use computers to diagnose patients to know what is actually the status of their health you can use for diagnosis of different uh, 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 parts of the body like you can scan the abdomen you can scan different parts of the body and sometimes you can use what they call CT scanning that is to scan the total the entire body and find out the status of all your organs and different parts of the body and also we use computer for patient monitoring system like people that have problems of cardiac, uh, cardiac arrest we use computers to continuously monitor the status of the head and supply the information to the doctor so that he knows what action he should take 
and we use computer in what we call pharma information system that is to check the genuity of drugs to check the expiry dates of drugs and others and we also today use computers for surgery yes there are some surgical operations that doctor don't need to touch you physically he can operate your computer that can carry out the surgery we also use computer in what we call telemedicine that is to interact with the patient and diagnose him and prescribe drugs for him while you are far away from him what communicates i mean what connects between you and him is a computer through what we call telemedicine system uh, in the field of engineering we use computer in different fields of engineering like structural engineers they can design ships they can design buildings they can design bridges they can design airplanes without physically touching the uh, uh, practical components therefore structural engineers use computer for their designs and in industrial engineering we use computers to design different things and implementation and also to find a way of improving the system before it is physically developed and uh, in architectural engineering they use computers for planning towns designing buildings and they do this using two-dimensional systems and three-dimensional systems or drawings which we call 2d and 3d uh, in the area of military the computer is used in many aspects first of all it is used for missile control yes they use computer today to send a missile from a far distance to the enemy tag i mean target enemy and they will be controlling it from where they are and it will go and strike the actual target and also the military use computers for their intelligent communications and they also use computer for operations and planning they use it for operating and launching smart weapons that are the weapons that you can send them and they will go and carry out the required uh, uh, instruction and we also use computer in what we call unmanned aerial vehicles you see airplanes airplanes fighter jets they will be operated from a remote area and they will go as if there is a pilot inside but they are unmanned there is nobody they will go and release bombs and what have you they can do surveillance and come back and also they use computers in tracking and destroying the incoming missiles from the enemy and also they use computer to help them design and test new military weapons and systems uh, if we come to the area of uh, communication the computer is used in many areas for instance we use computers for sending email messages from one person to another we use computers for chatting yes when once you are online and online we can be exchanging messages sometimes the messages should be text and sometimes it can be voice and even a video because if you have uh, the software they call Skype you can chat with your colleague over the internet you can see him he will see you in real time conversing with one another we also use it for Usenet and Telnet this Usenet and Telnet they are just protocols for exchange of files between one user and the other and we also use computers for video conferencing yes a company or a government parasitical can convene a meeting in such a way that the attendants of the meeting are in different parts of the world and they will communicate with one another using computers they will be seeing one another in real time and exchanging their views also uh, with regards to the government's operations we use computers in the areas of budgets in the areas of cells tax departments 
income tax department in the areas of conducting the census, population census of a country, and we also use computers for computerization of our votes. And also, we use computers in computerizing our driving license systems, and we also use computers in what we call tax management in such a way that they give you a permanent account number in such a way that they can be tracing your payments and deduce on you if you are a company owner or maybe a worker or individual and also government uses computers for forecasting waiters yes that's why you can hear like united states of america before the coming of some uh, uh, disastrous weathers they warn their people they can even evacuate them because they use computer systems for monitoring and forecasting the possible things that may come in the future so ladies and gentlemen uh, briefly we can see this is the reason why we need computers because they find application in all aspects of our lives today without computers there will be a serious problem regarding to what we are doing in life now the next thing is to look at the how computers operate because the heading if you can remember is why and how of computers so how does the computer operate okay so for us to understand the operation of computer we should understand that there are five computer operation functions in all computer regardless to what type you have there are five basic operations. The first one is acceptance of data by the computer in or through input devices. Every computer you have, for it to satisfy the condition of being called a computer, it must have the ability of accepting data or accepting instructions from the input terminals. And another function that is common to all computers is storage of data. The computer can store data. Any computer that you have today falls into the category of what we call complex computers and they have the ability of storing the data. Also, the data that the computer accepts, it can store it before processing as well as after processing the data. Okay? And also, that storage has an intermediate stage. That is, while the data is being processed, before the processing is over, it will be storing the data as a form of uh, backup so that we prevent the loss of the computer if something happened to that processing a process. So the aspect number three that is common to all computers as far as their operation is concerned is that they process the data as required by the user. And that processing, they use it in the unit we call uh, 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 ALU. And this ALU stands for Arithmetic and Logic Unit. That is the unit of computer that can carry out mathematical operations like addition, subtractions, multiplications, and others like integration, differentiation, depending on what you want. And the a logical unit is for comparison to compare two things to take action whether they are the same different or what have you and also all these are they reside in what we call the cpu which is the central processing unit of the computer and of course this is the brain of the computer then the item number four as per the operation of computer is uh, concerned is producing results as a form of outputs they call it an information that is after accepting the data storing the data processing the data then after the processing it produces an output in form of information and the last aspects of the computer operation is it has a control unit which is responsible for controlling all the operations taking place in the computer and this control unit and the arithmetic and logical unit reside inside what we call the CPU, which is the brain of the computer. Now, we have seen the five operations involved. 
in the operation of a computer. Now, what are the functional units of every computer? Yes, as we have said, the computer has three separate functional units. The first one is that uh, arithmetic and logical unit, and the second one is the control unit. And if you combine these two, they will give you the third unit, which is called the central processing unit. As you can see in this diagram, we have our control units adjacent to uh, arithmetic and logical units, and all of them give what we call CPU, that is the central processing units. As we said, this uh, arithmetic and logical unit together with the control unit, they are collectively or jointly known as the central processing unit, that is the CPU of the computer. Now, for computer to be able to carry out all these operations, there is so, something that is like the life bloat. Without it, the computer is just like any uh, 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 thing that cannot do anything for you. And that is what we call the operating system of the computer. What is operating system? The operating system of a computer is the software that is responsible for managing the total, I mean the computer in general. It manages the hardware and the software of the computer at the same time. As you can see here, this diagram is given us a typical uh, 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 interconnection between uh, the central processing unit and all other components of the computer. You can see that the central processing unit is responsible for controlling your applications, your hard drives, your CPU, keyboards, your printers, your memory man management, your network interface, your display mode, and all other things. Without C uh, operating system, the computer cannot work. So, we are done with the why and how of the computer. That is why we need computer and how the computer operates. The next thing is item number four on our content, which is the types of the computer we have. Basically, we have three types of computer. The first one is called analog computer. The second one is called digital computer. And the last one is called hybrid computer as you can see them listed here analog digital and hybrid okay now let us start with the first one what is an analog computer the analog computer is a type of computer that provide us an information in continuous form what you mean by continuous form is that the information it produces is not in discrete form in such a way that if something is discrete it will give you a particular value at a particular time but the continuous part of it it has value at each time and these computers that processes their information and produce the results in form of continuous wave i mean signal is called an analog computer the examples of these analog computers are the i mean uh, I'm talking of not advanced, I mean complex computers today. There are things like the thermometers, the things like our traditional clock, and the weight machine, uh, the, 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 the analog speedometer, and what have you. They all produce their information in continuous form. Therefore, they are categorized under analog computer. So now, what are the features, what are the characteristics of an analog computer. The first feature that you will check and confirm whether it is analog or not is that the analog computer have no states. What do you mean by no states? We cannot say that at a particular time it is on or off or it is high or low, but rather it has results at any particular point in time. Therefore, it doesn't have a state. And number two, the speed of the analog computer is very fast. Why? Because they don't need to convert the information because the actual information we get from real 
uh, live uh, systems mostly they are in continuous form analog form so the analog computer will accept them in that form and process them like that and produce the result therefore they are carrying out their operation at a very high speed because there is no need of anything like conversion from analog to digital form before processing or the other view therefore these computers another feature they have they are not that very reliable because they don't have state you can make a mistake while taking reading from it and of course it can make a mistake when producing output result because it doesn't have a particular state of operation another feature or characteristic of analog computer is that they are the base they are the foundations of digital computers yes as i told you most of the real dev data uh, real time data we have they are in analog form in continuous form therefore for you to have a digital system you have to start from the analog background therefore the analog computers they are the background they are the base for the digital computers and these computers are sometimes difficult to operate and use because you need to be very careful and to be i mean to have some certain level of knowledge for you to accurately take out their measurements because they don't have states unlike the digital that give the result in discrete form therefore you can see it clearly without uh, problem and these computers are very easy to develop yes they are easy because as i told you they operate in analog form they don't need any conversion and these computers most of the times they have small memory that is storage capacity of these computers is mostly very small now let us move to the digital computer the digital computers on the other hand they are the computers which present their physical quantities their results with the help of symbols or with the help of numbers for this we say they provide their result in discrete form that is the have states you can know exactly this value is let's say 3 10 there is nothing in between it give you a discrete uh, uh, result as an uh, output and these computers if you want to take a look at examples the simpler ones you can have something like a digital watch it shows time in uh, uh, discrete form it gives you time in numbers not like a handle moving around the clock no and another example of uh, digital computer is digital petrol station pump as your car is being filled by a petrol you will see the readings are in discrete form numbers not like something moving or rotating like in analog form so these are two examples of uh, simple uh, digital computers now for us to understand whether this computer is digital or analog what are the features what are the characteristics that we should check first of all these computers they have two states their two states are on or off and this on or off you can call them high or low and in uh, values you can represent them by a figure zero and uh, one that is low and high also they are easy to use because they give result in discrete form in numbers that everybody can understand and of course they are more popular today and these computers are more reliable because of their digital nature and of course digital computers they mostly have a very big memory but another feature of these computers is that they are slower when we compare them with analog computers in their operation the reason why they are slow is that in digital computers you need to do some conversions from analog form to digital forms using devices we call ADCs analog to digital converters and these computers are further divided I mean the digital computers are further divided into different categories we have what we call PCs that is personal computers we have what we call mainframe computers and we have what we call super computers all these fall under 
digital computer. So uh, the last one, ladies and gentlemen, is the hybrid computer. As the name implies, the hybrid from English is combination of more than one thing. Yes, so hybrid computers are the computers that have the features of digital computers and the analog computers. Typical examples of hybrid computers are the computers that we use in hospitals in intensive care units. These computers, they have features of analog and digital, as I said. The analog segments of these computers used in intensive care units, they control things like the temperature of a room and the likes. While the digital segments of the hybrid computer, the uh, the, 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 the monitor the status of the patient and deliver the information to the doctor in digital form. And what are the characteristics of these computers? The characteristics of digital computers include this. Number one, they are very reliable because they have digital segment which is more reliable than the analog and they have very high speed because of the analog segments they have and of course they have high accuracy because of the digital segment they contain so ladies and gentlemen uh, I can say this is the end of our lecture number one in this course board 718 which is computers in organization I would like to conclude my lecture by advising you to sit down carefully, watch the tutorials, try to understand, play it many times for you to really grasp uh, the information delivered here and try to consult your uh, student's notes, I mean the lecture notes of the course so that you can see the more details because this lecture is like giving you the main points and I advise you that whenever you have any problem concerning uh, this lecture, don't hesitate to contact me. I will try my best to see that I help you out. Thank you very much for listening and watching and let us meet in the second tutorial.